be available during this webinar. The image on the right here shows you how to access them. You just click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen and select show subtitle. And then if you need to turn them back off, click live transcript again and select hide subtitles. Just a reminder that the subtitle box is movable. If you click on the box and drag it to where it's most comfortable and convenient for you, that should go ahead and stay there in place throughout the remainder of the presentation. Following the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. However, feel free to put your questions as they come to you during the presentation in the chat, and we will do our best to address them at the end of the presentation. Okay, next slide. And before I turn it over to Juan, I just wanna give you a little bit of background information as to why the work TNC is doing in the apps is so important. So for those of you have, who have been following along, um, in our last webinar, you learned about the impressive work that the Nature Conservancy is doing in the apps, which is the incredible mountain range that spans roughly 2,000 miles from Alabama to Canada. This image here is showing the outline of the apps landscapes with the important climate resilient lands and habitats identified in green. The apps are considered to be one of the most important places on the globe for biological diversity. To give you a number, roughly 80,000 occurrences of rare species can be found in the Appalachians. In fact, the rich variety of species, natural resiliency, and diverse communities and cultures put the apps alongside the Amazon rainforest and the Kenyan grasslands as one of the most globally important landscapes for tackling climate change and conserving biodiversity. Next slide, please. In addition to protecting biodiversity, plants, and animals, the apps provide countless benefits to people. Drinking water protection, pollution mitigation, and of course, part of today's topics, recreation. The apps generate approximately $25 billion in recreation spending through activities like camping, backpacking, kayaking, and you guessed it, hiking. In New Jersey, the apps run right through the northwestern portion of the state and they provide some of the best hiking opportunities for in New Jersey and the surrounding states. But before heading out for a hike, it is important to make sure that you're prepared and you know the rules of the trails and the preserves, which is why today we are joined by Juan Melly of Take a Hike, who is going to give us what I like to call his Hiking the Apps Crash Course. Juan is an avid hiker. He volunteers as a trail maintainer on a section of the Appalachian Trail, and he serves on the board of Team Wilderness a nonprofit that gets underserved urban youth into wilderness experiences. He also runs a website called Take a Hike, mainly focused on hikes in New Jersey and New York. Juan has a PhD in mechanical and aerospace engineering from Princeton University, and he's a managing director at Mercury Public Affairs. Without further ado, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Juan so we can dive deep into all things hiking. Take it away, Juan. Great. Uh, thank you, Lily, for the introduction. Um, thank you, Nature Conservancy, for having me on. Um, thanks to everybody tuning in. Uh, I'm really excited to kind of do a Appalachians hiking crash course. Um, I'll go through some of my favorite hikes, give some tips um, and um, for beginners and, and a few for more advanced people. Um, just very quick background. I love the outdoors. Uh, I love hiking. I love backpacking. Uh, I take my kids out whenever I can. Um, I, I, I feel so strongly about it that I, I volunteer to maintain a piece of a trail so that others can experience it. So I'm really excited to kind of share, um, you know, what I've learned about hiking. Um, you know, I want to go through today. I live in New Jersey. So a lot of what I'm going to focus on is New Jersey centric. The Appalachians obviously span um, from Georgia to Canada. Um, but I'm going to focus on my experience, New Jersey. I'm going to talk about three hikes in New Jersey, one in New York, one Pennsylvania. Um, but obviously, um, you know, the, the, the scope of the Appalachians is much broader than that. Um, I was actually in, uh, Utah for spring break about two weeks ago. And on the flight back, I was thinking about, uh, the things I wanted to share, um, on this webinar and I happened to put on the the, the flight uh, monitor thing 
and it showed our plane. And I thought it was interesting. The only geographic feature that was labeled on the map was the Appalachian Mountains, not the oceans or Great Lakes. So it, it just kind of reinforced how important the mountains are, um, obviously to, to pilots even uh, and airlines. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna go through my top five hikes. It doesn't mean they're the best five. Um, there, you know, I happen to like um, hikes that are scenic, that have some history to them. Um, I like to uh, learn the history of places. Uh, when I take my kids, I like to use them as an opportunity to teach them. Um, so, you know, these are just, um, there's, there's so many great places to hike, but these are, these are mine, um, my top five, I would say. And uh, three of them are from New Jersey. Um, the one thing I do want to say beforehand is uh, just stressing the idea of leave no trace. Um, these are seven principles about minimizing our impact on the trails. <clears throat> so when we go out into the wilderness, the idea is that we leave it as close as possible to how we found it. If each person who was out there hiking left one piece of litter or uh, cut up and took a wildflower or something, the outdoors, the wilderness would look very different. And so, um, you know, whenever we go out into the wilderness, we can't actually leave no trace, but it's about minimizing our impact. Um, even cutting off a trail, um, stepping off a trail, you're trampling on additional plants. And that's why we have trails to, to kind of um, maintain uh, our impact, minimize our impact rather. Um, so there's these seven principles. You can go to Leave No Trace website um, or kind of the Cliff Notes version which is what I taught my kids from a very young age. When we go hiking, the only thing we take is pictures. The only thing we leave is our footprints. The only thing we kill is our time. And uh, if you get those principles, that's 90% there. Um, and I, I, I tried really hard to get that idea ingrained in the kids. Um, when we're hiking, they find interesting rocks and plants and, and their instinct is to take them with them. Um, and it's important to, to really leave no trace. So um, I'll jump into my first uh, top hike, uh, which is Sunfish Pond and Raccoon Ridge. This is actually a section of the Appalachian Trail in New Jersey. It uh, spans Worthington State Forest and part of the Delaware Water Gap uh, National Recreation Area. Um, I love it. Uh, I'm biased. I happen to, this is uh, Raccoon Ridge in this photo is um, part of Kittatinny Mountain. Um, and I think it's one of the most beautiful uh, viewpoints in New Jersey. Um, I maintain this section of trail. So for me, it, you know, trail maintenance just doesn't feel like work because I'm going somewhere I love. Um, so, but what I really like about this is the views and relative solitude. There's a very popular hike in, you know, just a few miles south of here um, called you know, on Mount Tammany. Um, if you don't get there by very early in the morning, it's hard to find parking, um, but you go a few miles north and you can get just incredible views and relative solitude. And you can always find a parking spot on, on Camp Road. Um, and one thing I wanted to say, don't you don't need to like kind of scramble and write down notes. Um, if I'm hoping that some of these pictures might interest you in, in checking out some of these places. And if they are interesting to you, um, I have on my website kind of a lot more information on each of these. So um, kind of just focus on the big picture and, and you can find this information online. You don't have to <clears throat> take notes, but uh, in this one, you, you can camp uh, park on camp road. You'll never have a problem finding a parking spot. And um, it's a great hike. This is Raccoon Ridge. Um, the other part of this hike is Sunfish Pond. Um, it, you know, it, it's a beautiful uh, lake. It's really, you know, it's popular, so it's it can get crowded. Um, I really like a lot of the history behind it. Um, Sunfish Pond is a glacial lake. If you look at this photo over here, um, so all the photos I'm going to show are my photos of of the Appalachian Trail, with the exception of a few of these. Um, so it's a lake on top of Kittitini Mountain, and it was carved by a glacier um, about 20,000 years ago, all of this. This was close to the southern extent of where the glaciers went. And when they retreated, they carved up this lake. Um, Sunfish Pond is actually the southernmost glacial lake 
on uh, the Appalachian Mountain. Um, it's, so it's a beautiful lake. It's a beautiful spot. I like to stop here kind of on the lunch break and turn around. Um, there's this nice little overlook over the lake. Um, but there's also, I find really interesting history about Sunfish Pond. It was named one of the seven natural wonders of New Jersey um, in kind of this high school uh, or, or school competition kids had. Um, but, but the more interesting piece about it is, it, if you look back at this photo, there's an island here. Um, and just north of here, there's another island. It's not in the photo, it's called Tox Island. And there was gonna be a plan in the 60s to dam the Delaware River. It's one of the last rivers that is not dammed. And that plan uh, would have included turning the lake into um, a, a hydro plant reservoir for a hydro plant on the, on the dam. And um, the Sunfish Pond was essentially the, the impetus for uh, the environmental movement in New Jersey. Uh, before there was an Earth Day or anything like that, the fight to save Sunfish Pond from that plan um, led to uh, really created New Jersey's environmental movement. And so um, it, it was uh, an effort that took years and decades. And I actually write up about it on my website if you want to learn more. Um, at one point, they got a Supreme Court justice to come out and hike to it to draw attention. His name was um, William Douglas. So at the bottom of, of the mountain, there's a trail called the Douglas Trail that takes you up to the Appalachian Trail. So there's a plaque for him and uh, it's a registered natural landmark now. Um, so it's a really, I think there's a lot of really interesting history surrounding it. Um, it's also an acidic lake, it's naturally acidic. So only certain types of fish can live in it. Um, and um, because of that, uh, this is now several decades ago, fishermen didn't find it uh, as a worthwhile lake. And so the precursor to New Jersey's DEP uh, they actually poisoned the lake um, to kill all the fish, the native fish, and they stocked it with trout, um, but the trout all died. There was no plants and, and the poison killed the trout too. And they did this twice. Um, it, they essentially sterilized the, the lake, um, but it, it has since come back, thankfully. But there's a lot of interesting um, history behind the lake um, besides just being a beautiful place. Um, one other thing I'll just note, Raccoon Ridge is because of its location and, and the mountains and, and the updrafts and the currents, it's a great hawk watch location. You'll see people counting uh, hawks, eagles, um, people with long camera lenses taking pictures. So they set up a fake owl and, and the raptors attack it. Um, and when I started maintaining this trail, I, I just find these little things interesting. There was an overgrown section off to the side, but I, I noticed there was a plaque there and apparently, um, yeah, it was for someone who maintained that trail uh, before me. So I, you know, I, I just like discovering kind of these little things. <clears throat> um, Andrew, yes, I have a, a post on that on my website. I can share that later. Um, the next uh, hike I want to share is called the Burnt Meadow Trail. And um, I just think like uh, Raccoon Ridge, I think this is one of the best views in the state. Um, I think it's just under appreciated. Um, uh, you know, there's a few hikes in New Jersey that get a lot of attention. And um, this one I think doesn't get enough and deserves more. It, it's relatively easy, it's short loop. Um, parking is easy. You're not competing with a million other people. And you get this view of the Monksville Reservoir and Horse Pond, from Horse Pond Mountain. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, and, um, you know, when I hiked it, I noticed, if you look on this picture on the left, the, the trail was just covered in moss. <clears throat> and that says to me, like, nobody's walking there, um, which to me is, you know, really uh, striking for such a beautiful place. So um, that's number two. Um, the, third, the third hike I want to point out is Pochuck Boardwalk. So in Vernon, there's a Pochuck Swamp, sometimes called the Pochuck Quagmire. Um, and I love this trail. It's not a difficult one. It's very kid friendly. I call it New Jersey's best boardwalk. Um, it, it's got the three W's, wildflowers, wildlife, wetlands. Um, just, it, it's really, you can go in the spring, wildflowers everywhere. 
it's flat uh, for the most part because it is boardwalks. Um, and there's just a ton of wildlife that you can see there. Uh, these are just a few. There's kind of these swamps and always you'll see turtles there, which the kids love, snakes. Um, near the end of a section, uh, you get to walk, the Appalachian Trail goes through a, an active cow pasture, which is fun. They, you know, you're supposed to stay on that boardwalk. If you don't, you definitely want to watch your step. Um, be careful there. Um, and if you go just a little bit further, you reach uh, Route 94, which is um, right here. And this is, you know, I, I've taken my kids here multiple times. Um, and, and we use, uh, when you get to Route 94, there's a farm called Heaven Hill Farm. And, you know, we treat them to ice cream and it's a really great place. And so we get there halfway, then turn around. It's a great motivator for the kids. Um, so I just love it because there's a boardwalk section. There's another section that kind of goes through forest and that gets a little bit of elevation gain. Um, there's a cow pasture across crosses railroad tracks um, and Heaven Hill Farm right at the other end of it. Um, so it's really uh, accessible for people. Uh, it's easy. Uh, the scenery is great. Um, the only thing you really have to contend with is the parking. It is popular for a reason, um, but there are uh, some parking options kind of in the middle that are a little bit less uh, known. So th there's parking options. And then I'll just say as a bonus to this, once you get to Route 94, uh, um, well, before I get there, just a little background. Originally, the Appalachian Trail through Vernon, because it was wetlands, it used to go through a road walk for several miles, um, which is obviously not a fun, fun way to hike. <clears throat> and a few decades ago, it was a very complicated project to build this boardwalk and, and even a suspension bridge over um, Pochuck Creek. Uh, it took a lot of volunteer hours. Um, and because this area floods, all of this is built on really um, creative pilings that float. So this boardwalk will float if it, if it floods. <clears throat> um, I happen to know, and I don't know him, but this is a photo of, of the volunteers working on it, on the bridge, in front of the bridge. Uh, Paul DeCoste, his nickname is Pinwheel. And um, so the reason I wanted to just point him out is, if you get to Route 94 and you continue, the next section of that trail is what people call the stairway to heaven. It's an extra, um, about a mile uh, uphill. and. Uh, at the very top is a viewpoint, and it's named after Pinwheel, uh, the volunteer who helped uh, uh, build this piece of trail and, and the, the boardwalk as well. Um, so if you are more adventurous, you want to do a little tougher hike, um, you can continue add on to the boardwalk piece and, and do what's called a stairway to, stairway to heaven. Um, that is where they built a, a stone staircase. It used to be a very eroded trail because it was it's a very steep section going up the mountain. Um, so there's a stone staircase. That is what's called Stairway to Heaven. People call the whole trail Stairway to Heaven. Um, but you know, depending on your um, your fitness level, however aggressive you want to be, um, this piece of the Appalachian Trail kind of gives everybody. Uh, options, whether you want something totally flat or, or something a little tougher. And there's a nice view at the top of the Vernon Valley. Um, right here in the back is a ski resort. I forget what it's called right now. Um, but this was in uh, early spring or late, late winter. Um, so my next hike uh, that I want to talk about is in New York called Gertrude's Nose. This is, it's a pretty popular, well-known hike. Um, and really the highlight of it is the, um, uh, these cliffs. It's just white, dramatic cliffs. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of these in kind of Minnewaska area in the Gunks. Um, what I like about this particular hike, and, and the hike would be great if it were just that, all of the foot trails and, and the whole rest of the park is just uh, really interesting that these kind of like stunted uh, pines and just the colors of the plants, um, you know, even aside from the cliffs, just the, the entire hike is really interesting. There's a lot of glacial evidence. This is a, it's called Patterson's pellet. So 
you know, I use it with my kids to just teach them about how did this giant boulder end up perched on the end of a cliff? Um, you know, a glacier deposited it there, right? Uh, many years ago. Um, so here they're just having fun pretending they're gonna push it off. Um, but, but the cliffs are really the highlight and there's, you know, deep crevices, you do have to be careful, um, but it's just a spectacular place. It is popular, you, you know, if you go on a weekend, you need to get there early because um, it'll fill up <clears throat> with good reason. Um, so the last hike I wanna talk about is Hawk Mountain. This one's in Pennsylvania. And um, I just thought the scenery there um, was just some of the nicest scenery I've, I've seen, at least on the East Coast. Um, and not just that, but it was very accessible. So this is North Lookout and it's a pretty short walk from the trailhead. Uh, the trail is relatively easy. Um, and um, I, I just thought that the scenery was just spectacular. Um, you can go further uh, and, and even beyond these viewpoints and do a loop, uh, which kind of involves scrambling and you need to use your hands quite a bit. Um, I did that with my son. Um, but really, you know, even, even the easier parts of the trail are just, I, I think the scenery is great. Um, but the other thing I really, uh, loved while I was there, I was talking to a park employee. He mentioned to me that on part of the hike we were going to do, there's an area uh, called East Rocks, and apparently it's it's prime uh, rattlesnake territory, um, and they might even reroute the trail as a result of that. But um, so we, we were hiking there, and you know I kept telling my son to be careful because we're using our hands to like scramble over rocks, watch out for snakes. You don't want to you know a bit um and we finally got there and i see a rattlesnake and then on the rocks kind of sunbathing which is what they do to warm up um and then just a few feet over i saw a second rattlesnake and you know i called my son over i mean like we thought it was awesome um and then a few feet over from that we saw a copperhead um and that's when i kind of started to get a little worried and wonder like how many snakes are here um, and I started to walk away a little bit, but um, I, I think I've only seen a rattlesnake once before uh, in the past. And, and to me, this was a really a cool sight to see two in the same place. Um, uh, and then just another feature about the park that I think is interesting is kind of more, um, it's an ice age boulder field. This picture has a person in it, just so you can get a scale of the size of the boulders. Um, if you listen carefully, there's a river that runs underneath it. And so it's kind of washed away all the soil. Um, so I, I like places like this with a mix of like scenery and um, just where you can, can kind of learn some of the geology and the history. Um, and I try to use that um, to, to, you know, teach when I go with my kids to teach them. Um, so, so those are a couple of hikes that I really love. There's, there's a lot of other hikes out there, obviously, um, but those are some of my favorites. Um, if you're new to hiking, just a few tips I would give to new hikers. Um, number one, hiking is just walking. If you can walk in it, I think you can usually hike in it. You don't need boots. Um, probably like a lot of people, I spent years hiking in boots and getting blisters and, and I hated having to break in boots. And when I finally got rid of them, um, my life just changed. So, you know, I hike in trail runners. Uh, if you like boots, it's great, but any sneakers you have work great. You don't need anything special. Um, just in terms of how to dress, dress in layers. Um, when it gets cold or hot, it's easier to take on or off layers than to have one kind of big layer that you can't really uh, adjust your temperature with. Um, you know, you don't need to run out to REI and get a bunch of gear to, to start hiking, but it's good to carry a pack with a few items, you know, food and some snacks and water and a few basic first aid things. Um, I always say carry a flashlight or headlamp. You, you know, you don't know if you're going to get lost and not get back before sun, sunset. Uh, rain jacket. I always put a rain jacket in my pack. Um, 
I have gone out many times and it's 0% chance of rain uh, or snow and it's rained or sleeted. Um, always carry a rain jacket. Um, carry a map. And I'll talk a little bit about, about maps on uh, uh, upcoming slide. Um, I really love the New York, New Jersey trail conference maps. I've used them to kind of identify new hikes to look at. Um, they're really, they're some of the clearest maps. If anywhere you see a, a black star, those are viewpoints. So you can really map out interesting hikes with them. Uh, I would always carry a paper map and uh, use an electronic one. Um, some basic hiking etiquette. Um, whoever's hiking uphill generally has the right of way. They're, you know, they're probably huffing and puffing. So let them go or at least give them the chance. Um, if you want to listen to music, wear headphones, you know, people are not out there to, to listen to your music. Um, and definitely, you know, start with easy trails. I'll give you a, a list of some of those uh, in, in a little bit. Start with easy trails, go with a friend. I love hiking alone. I find it really um, therapeutic, but hiking with friends is, is a lot of fun too. And especially when you're just beginning, um, find someone who has hiked and knows the trails. So maybe you don't need to worry as much about finding your way. Um, and then just a tip about wildlife, be smart about it, but don't overly worry. Uh, I know I showed slide with snakes um, and people worry about snakes and bears. Um, you know, and I think it's okay to be thoughtful about that, but don't let that deter you from hiking. I think that wildlife, you know, I would be more worried about ticks and, and mosquitoes than, than snakes. Um, and, you know, there's things you can do to, to protect yourself. I would wear long sleeves, long pants, hats, um, and, and bug spray and things like that. Um, I think it's important to know how to read trail markings. If you're hiking and you're just looking at the ground and just following uh, the route, whatever looks like the most obvious route, it's really easy to get lost and go off trail. Um, um, so it, it, I think it's important to know what trail you're on and what the markings look like and, and how to follow them. So this chart shows, uh, so these markings on trees are called blazes. Uh, that, that's where, um, you know, the, the word trailblazer comes from uh, blazing trails, which is, you know, marking trails to, uh, to, to guide people and which way to go. So these are called blazes. Um, and the three you really want to know, you know, one blaze just means here's the trail. And then two blazes means you're turning left or right, whichever blaze is on top, that's a direction. So I'll just really quickly go through a couple of examples. This is the Appalachian Trail. You won't usually see a marker like this, but that's the logo for the Appalachian Trail. Uh, the Appalachian Trail is a two by six inch white blaze. Uh, if a trail is properly blazed, whenever you're at a blaze, you should be able to see the next one ahead of you. So in this case, if you look, uh, you can see the next white blaze up here. Um, a lot of times trails are very obvious, um, but there can always be side trails. A, a trail might fork. Uh, it might be covered in leaves or snow. And so being able to follow blazes uh, is important. On this one, uh, these two white blazes means the trail, the Appalachian Trail is turning left. Um, specifically on the Appalachian Trail, uh, side trails are almost always blue. So three blazes here means it's the beginning of a side trail that goes somewhere. Um, this sign says it's 819 miles to Maine um, and 0.9 miles to, to wherever that blue trail goes. Um, best practice is to put these blazes on a, a healthy live tree but sometimes there aren't trees. And so you might see blazes on the ground. Um, the reason as a trail maintainer, I wouldn't typically want to put it on the ground because if it's covered in leaves or snow, you're not gonna see it, but sometimes you don't have a choice. So here you can see the end of the white trail of these three blazes. The triangle means the, the beginning or end, depending on the orientation. And then there's these two yellow blazes saying uh, the trail is turning left. And if you look, closely here up on this tree, you can see another yellow blade. So you might look up and, and see the next one. Um, sometimes blazes aren't painted on. They might be um, uh, attached as a plastic or metal 
um, marking, uh, which is com it's more common in New York than New Jersey, for example, um, but you'll see them anywhere. The, so in this case, you have two different blazes. You have a, a blue dot blaze, this is a Sterling Ridge Trail, and you have the Highlands Trail, which is a, a teal diamond. And typically the convention is the more, uh, uh, a long distance trail would get, um, their blaze would be on top. So if, if, if a trail was co-aligned with the Appalachian Trail, the Highlands Trail, the Long Path, something like that, um, the long distance trail would go on top. So that's what you're seeing here. These are two trails that kind of follow the same path. <clears throat> and this is right on the border with New York and New Jersey. Uh, in this case, you have both trails following the same path and they're both turning left. Uh, on this one, you've got a blue trail turning left and then you've got a blue with a black dot going straight. And, and here they posted a sign saying, you know, if you go straight, it's a steep rocky path, it's an easier one to the left. Kind of some information. Um, this one, I think this was a terrace pond. You, you've got a red trail that's turning right. You have a blue and yellow. I think this is some kind of spur trail that ended. And then um, these arrows are a little unconventional, but they're kind of common. And it's saying this blue trail um, kind of does a loop here. I, I think this area was completely uh, reblazed in different colors recently, but there's a lot going on there and it's, it's helpful to, to know what you're reading so you can kind of match that up with a map. <clears throat> um, speaking of maps, uh, like I said, I always carry a, a paper map. You never know when, um, you know, your, your phone might run out, but I always use my phone for navigation. Um, digital maps now are just, they're just great. Uh, they can display your location on the map using GPS, even when you don't have cell phone reception. Um, so I navigate almost completely with my uh, cell phone now, um, but I, I will always carry a paper map just in case. Um, my, my recommendation, if you live in New York, New Jersey, um, uh, I would recommend the Avenza app. The app itself is free. You can download a bunch of different maps for it. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. I think the best maps in the area are the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference digital maps. Um, some of those are free, some are paid. They're worth every dime. Um, Gaia GPS is an app that I use uh, a lot. Um, and you can track your routes. These are a bunch of routes I've done in the area. There's a free version. It only works if you have cell phone reception. The, the premium one works without cell phone reception. In a lot of places, you're going to have cell phone reception anyway. So um, you might want to try it out somewhere you have reception to see if it's worth it for you. And then um, I'll just point out this app called uh, Far Out. It used to be called Gut Hook. Most people know it as Gut Hook, but it was rebranded as Far Out. Not nearly as cool. Um, but it's really for long distance trails. And if you're hiking the Appalachian Trail, I would say, especially if you're backpacking parts of the Appalachian Trail, it's a really useful app. Um, it lists uh, tent sites, uh, where to get water, viewpoints, um, and it uses your GPS and it, it'll tell you the next tent site is half mile away. The next water source is a mile away. Um, this is specific to the Appalachian Trail, specific to um, other long distance trails like Pacific Crest Trail, things like that. Um, but if you do those, um, I think it's, it, it's worth it. It's a great app. Um, so that's it on apps. Uh, just a few more. You know, I went through a couple of hike ideas. If you're looking to just get started or something to do with kids, there's a bunch of hikes that I think have features that are really interesting to the kids. Either they're playful or um, just appealing to them or just easy. Um, so here's a couple ideas and I, and I have these on my website also if you, if you want to look so you don't need to scramble to write down. Um, and then um, I guess the last thing I would say if, you know, for more advanced people, there are, at least in the region, surprisingly rugged. Yeah, Andrew asked if I've hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. I have not. I've hiked it in New Jersey and, and about 30 miles in New York. I've hiked about 100 miles of it. Um, but there are, you know, I think the Appalachian Trail is a really rugged, 
piece of trail in the area. It's surprisingly rugged, Barefoot Ridge, uh, parts of Wawayanda. Uh, if you're looking for that, that's out there, um, even in kind of the densely populated region that I live in um, or near here. If you want solitude, um, you can find it. Um, Pequannock Watershed, this is where the city of Newark gets their water from. It's a large area in North Jersey. You need a permit to access it. It's like $15. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen someone else out there. Well, you know, this photo is in the Pequannock Watershed. There's just incredible scenery, incredible trails that they're not part of a state park. And so they're just a lot more under the radar. And if you're looking for solitude, uh, that, that's my go-to. Um, and then if you're looking for challenging trails, if you need to train for something, uh, you can get challenging trails. We don't have tall mountains in New Jersey, but you can get a really good workout. You can go, you know, 10, 15, 20 mile loops with huge elevation gain, uh, ups and downs, you know, especially uh, the Wyanokis in North Jersey, I think um, you can get really steep trails and I do a lot of hiking out west, and I actually, I've kind of concluded that I think a lot of our trails are harder. Um, what I've been told is we have a lot of these footpaths, and they were designed to get you straight up to the top of a of a hill or mountain. Um, and so they're kind of they just take a pretty direct route up. And out west, they had to build a lot of trails for pack animals, horses, and mules, and so they had to grade them a lot more gently and a lot more switchbacks and. Uh, and I've kind of found that, that I think the trails out west generally aren't as hard as ours. Um, so, you know, anyone thinking you need to go somewhere with huge elevations to get a, a challenging hike, uh, I, I dismiss that completely. I think you can get that uh, anywhere in the region. Um, so that leaves us with about 20 minutes and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hope that was helpful. Thank you, Juan. We did get um, a couple questions here. One, I believe you briefly answered it, but I wasn't sure if you wanted to go into um, a little bit more detail. And that was, do you have any stories or articles about the Sunfish Pond story that you kind of touched up upon in the beginning of the presentation? Yeah, yeah. I have an article I wrote. It's called like A Brief History of Sunfish Pond. You'll find it on my website. Um, there's a lot more to it. I actually have a few books on it. I, I just found the story of it really fascinating. So um, I actually did a, a lot of research. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in the, the political aspect of it actually. And uh, I found that really interesting. So I kind of focused a little bit there as well as on the environmental aspect. Um, but so yeah, I did write up about that and I, I find that story fascinating. Okay, great. Um, we have another question. I guess it would be good to start with, have you ever hiked the Smoky Mountains? And if so, do you have any recommendations? I have been there twice. Um, yeah, um, gosh, I, I don't know the name of it. I have a few of them on my website, um, uh, but yes, uh, there's a cool, uh, you know, I don't remember it now, but it's it's a, it's a cool mountain um, with, um, it's actually got kind of cabins at the top. So people who want to do an overnight hike, but you know, maybe you don't want to get into backpacking, you don't want to carry all the gear, you can make a reservation and stay overnight at the cabin. And um, it's, a, it's a neat place. They, they bring up food and they, they make dinner and uh, they actually use llamas to carry up all the supplies. It's a pretty cool site. That was awesome. Um, okay, let's see. What are your must-haves when it comes to hiking gear? Anything in particular? Um, if I'm going on a hike that's more than a few miles, I take trekking poles. Um, you know, I think like a lot of people, they might have thought they were kind of geeky, nerdy, whatever. Um, I found, especially going downhill, they're valuable to slowing me down crossing a stream or anywhere where you need to balance over like rocks and boulders, like uh, for balance, I, I love having trekking poles. That's a must have. Um, I just always carry a rain jacket and an insulated jacket. The temperature can change. Um, always carry first aid kit. Um, those are my must haves. Okay, let's see. Oh, it looks like 
maybe could you go back um, a slide or two? It looks like someone wanted to know about this photo, I believe. The low, yeah, where is the lower left photo from? I'm guessing it was on. Yeah, the so this is in the Pequannock watershed. This is, I, I mean, it's an unmarked trail. It's a woods road. Um, mm -hmm. It's an old woods road. Uh, you can follow it, and I, I have a map for it. It's off of Route 23. I forget the town. You can find it on my website. Um, and there's, if you're on the road, there's no indication that there's a trail there. Uh, there's no marker at the trailhead. Um, but but there's old wood roads there that you can take to the top, and it's a great view. Uh, we have another one. Your photos are incredible. What kind of photography equipment do you use? Um, most of these photos are with an iPhone. Um, I do, if I'm going somewhere where I think there's going to be really spectacular scenery, I, I have a Sony A6600. Um, and I also had a Ricoh GR3. Um, um, but, you know, 95% of the time it's an iPhone. Okay. And I think it's a lot of composition and angles that, that, that really, uh, I, I love photography. Um, and um, that's part of why I like going out into nature. And I'm guessing there's more of your beautiful photos on your website that people can enjoy? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and, and I created my website. I, I really focused on the photography and trying mm -hmm. to highlight the the scenery that's out there um to like entice people to get out to nature because you know at least for me growing up in new jersey i had no idea that a lot of these places existed um and when i started discovering them i was kind of surprised by it so i want people to learn about them and you know hopefully uh uh pique their curiosity I guess kind of going along with that uh, for new hiker theme, do you ever lead group hikes for uh, beginner hikers or anything like that? Um, or if I you think, don't, do you know of any groups that do? Yeah, um, uh, I mean, like I've, I've taken like my kids scout group and I've, you know, I've gone with friends. Uh, I don't lead a formal group. If, if there's people interested and want need to lead them somewhere i'm happy to do that um you know on meetup there's a bunch of groups uh at different kind of meetup.com has a bunch of groups and different by geography and, and ability level um uh, i i'm part of a group called the west milford 13ers i think it's called don weiss uh who's with the new york new jersey trail conference leads that group there's a facebook group for it um he's great he's a great tour guide uh, and I love his hikes. Um, but uh, other than kind of informally with friends or with my kids, uh, I, I don't lead group hikes. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'll start doing that. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Is there anything that makes the app special to you versus other mountain ranges? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's, I like hiking out west. I love hiking out west and in national parks and things. Um, you know, but a lot of these really popular places, you need permits and and they're you know there's a lottery and things like that. And I think the Appalachians are really underappreciated. And um, you know, I just love the ruggedness of it. I love that um, you know I can pack up and and leave on a Friday afternoon for the weekend and. Uh, hike a few miles and and uh, find a spot and set up a tent and and just be alone for the weekend and I think that's great. Um, you know, there's no drama. I don't need to get a permit and um, I, I just love that. Okay, we have another one here. Hawk Mountain used to have a fee for access. Do you know if that is still the case? It does. Yeah. Okay. It, it's like a. It's not a state park. It's a, a private organization that owns it all right i think that is all of the questions um, that we have covered in the chat unless anyone has any last minute questions they want to run by you but i am not seeing anything else give people a minute here 
Well, Guam, thank you so much. That was a really fantastic presentation. Um, you are definitely just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to hiking the apps. And I don't know about everyone else, but I'm definitely feeling excited to get outside and go for a hike. Um, thank you for everyone for being here today. You can keep up with us and take a hike through the social media channels listed above. Um, also make sure to check out uh, Juan's website that where he, that's where he has his um, blogs, the hiking recommendations, as well as some more of his awesome photography. Um, keep an eye out for a follow-up email from us later this week. The email is going to have a link to today's uh, webinar recording, as well as some additional resources for hiking the apps. And I just want to give you a big thank you, Juan, for putting this incredible presentation together. And, you know, the Nature Conservancy thanks you. We're looking forward to working together with you in the future. And thank you for everyone being here today. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.